Ever felt like there's a clutter in your life that you can't quite pinpoint? It might not be physical. It could be habits, thoughts, or even people. Welcome to the journey of quiet elimination, where we uncover the silent saboteurs lingering in our lives. In this video, we'll explore the transformative power of removing these subtle hindrances, allowing you to create space for growth, clarity, and fulfillment. Let's dive in. The first thing that you need to eliminate from your life are toxic people, be they in the realm of friendship or romance. Everyone knows that you become the people you spend the most time with, and yet most people don't know how to end bad relationships. They feel obligated to stay in contact with people, even if it hurts them. Listen, no matter how great of a time you once had with a person, times change. Sometimes a chapter of those people in your life is finished, and you need to see that for what it is. It doesn't matter whether you've known them for 10 years. Growing, they need to go cut them out of your life out of loyalty to your yourself, and you don't owe anyone an explanation. In fact, it's important to end these relationships without telling everyone, because when you keep these matters private, you not only preserve the dignity of all involved, but it also helps you with acceptance and healing so you can self-reflect and deal with the issues internally instead of listening to everyone's opinion. There is nothing more pathetic than a man who feels sorry for himself. I understand that life can be very hard, but no matter what you are going through or your story, a man can't feel sorry for himself because feeling sorry for ourselves only makes us weaker. It gives us excuses to fail and nothing good ever comes from it. Always remind yourself that there are many successful people out there who have had it worse than you. They didn't become successful by complaining or by having a victim mindset, but by using their pain and pushing forward. So instead of feeling sorry for use your pain and rise to the top. Social media is a double-edged sword. You can learn a lot, make a lot of money, and improve your life massively with it. But you can also get sucked in and lose yourself in it. Most people don't consciously use social media. They scroll and constantly watch the stories of other people, and that's why their mental health suffers. Listen when we scroll through these digital stories. We compare our tough moments with other people's highlights. This makes us feel dissatisfied and jealous. Do you see how it can be harmful? So it's important to limit how much time we spend on social media. Ask yourself, am I looking for something useful or am I just wasting time? When you ask yourself this question, it helps you identify if you are using social media purposefully or just mindlessly scrolling. Think of it like visiting a library with a specific purpose. Go in and find what you need, whether it's connection, inspiration, or information, and then leave to focus on your own life. I have specific times during the day when I'm not allowed to go on social media. These are times where I do deep work training or spend time with loved ones, and when I am allowed to check social media. Lastly, if you find yourself feeling down after using these platforms, take a break and use the time to do things you enjoy in the real world, like reading a book, doing a hobby, or simply enjoying nature. By doing these things, you not only protect your mental health, but also discover the beauty of your own story without always comparing it to others. Whenever we chase our goals, there comes a point where self-doubt kicks in. This self-doubt can destroy our confidence and keep us further and further away from accomplishing our goals. Now, most motivational people will tell you to just keep believing in yourself, but that really doesn't help when your self-doubt is strong. I have found that the best way to get rid of self-doubt is to recognize that often that self-doubt is justified. Think about it. If you set the goal to become a millionaire, but you've never made a million before, it's only natural to fill yourself with self-doubt. You don't possess the skills to make a million, otherwise, you would have done so already. So, instead of forcing yourself to keep believing in yourself to the point of delusion, I want you to objectively picture a 2.0 version of yourself that has already accomplished this goal and then ask yourself, how is he able to do it? What capabilities does this 2.0 version of yourself have? List them down. Those capabilities are what you need in order to remove self-doubt and achieve your goal. So chase the 2.0 version of yourself until you become him. That's the best way to deal with self-doubt. A lot of people hold grudges in their hearts without even knowing it, whether it's against other people or something that happened to them. They have a form of hatred deep inside their hearts, and this keeps them from true inner peace. Now I understand what it's like to have that resentment. I've had it myself for a long time, so I'm not judging anyone for using it. After all, hate can be a powerful source of energy to get to your goals, but at the end of the day, hatred corrupts the soul. You can't carry hating your heart for too long, or it will consume you. So after using your resentment and hate in a productive way, you must learn to let it go. Learn to forgive others, not in favor of others, but as a gift to yourself. Forgiveness is the real key to inner peace and happiness. 
There's too much noise all around us, from the news to social media. You're being fed non-stop information, and sometimes we just need to muffle the noise. Take a moment for quiet time, turn off the phone, find a quiet place, have a cup of coffee or tea, and just think about things, or think about nothing at all. You'll be surprised at how many solutions you'll find in silence. Most people constantly compare themselves to others, and that's why they stay miserable. Comparing ourselves to others is a natural tendency, but it can quickly become an unhealthy habit, because instead of focusing on our own growth and achievements, we can become fixated on what others are doing and how they're doing it. This type of comparison is not only unproductive, but it can also lead to feelings of inadequacy. We must recognize that everyone's journey is unique, and what works for someone else may not work for us. We all have different journeys and paths in life, and it's important to remember that each person's journey is unique. Instead of constantly comparing yourself to others, focus on your own journey and purpose. Now, I want to emphasize that there's nothing wrong with comparison if you're in competition against another man. But if you're not competing, don't compare yourself to others. Comparison is a thief of joy, and it only serves to bring unnecessary stress and dissatisfaction into your life. Embrace your own strengths and talents and strive to be the best version of yourself. Remember that success and happiness are not measured by how you stack up against others, but by how fulfilled and content you are with your own accomplishments. So let go of the URS to compare and instead focus on your own personal growth.